Hello and welcome back. My name is Dara and today we are making a potted orchid planter. This is a decorative planter. This is very much unlike how you would pot something if it were for a hobby. And most hobbyists of growing orchids will know this, but there is a difference. There is a difference between decorative orchids and orchids grown by hobbyists. The potting media, the potting methods are totally different. So today's video is all about how to make a gorgeous decorative orchid planter. So I start with having an idea in mind of the type of orchid planter that I want to make. And sometimes that is a visual concept that I have in my head, but more often than not, the visual concept that I have in my head, unless I've pre-ordered my materials, are very likely to not be available at my market or my orchid grower. So what I do is I, I have an idea in mind and that is good to have in mind because that will kind of inform your design. But at the same time, I leave it open to interpretation and I go to my orchid vendor and I see what they have available and then based on what they have available, then I design around that. There are certain materials that I always like to use for potting orchids, so I always have those in my studio. You might want to do something a little bit more offbeat or super matching uh, whatever variety orchid you choose and the container that you choose to put it in. So that's kind of a little bit of a different topic, but I pretty much always use the same materials because I think it looks very classic and elegant and it's kind of, it's just my favorite look. So there are certain materials that I always have on hand and that is mood moss. This is a thicker than uh, usual moss that you might see for decoration. There's also sheet moss, which is much thinner. It's probably one fifth of the thickness, the depth of mood moss, but I like mood moss because of that reason. It has like a nice thickness to it. And what we do to make this really nice and malleable is soak this in water. And I will show you that in a little bit, but I always pretty much always use mood moss. It's my favorite moss. And then to secure the orchids to their stakes, I use this wired bamboo natural colored wire which then gets snipped and we secure onto the stake with that and that matches the natural bamboo color really beautifully i love this you can also use wire but wire will be a little bit more abrasive to the orchid stem and for that reason you have to be more delicate and more careful it's not impossible to use wire but i have damaged many orchids completely severed the stem on accident with wire. So using something that is like a coated wire is much better for the orchid and your flow of design process. If you're designing orchids for your business, this is just a much more efficient way because you don't have to be extremely delicate with this material. So a coated wire material is really good. And this one is has almost like a raffia-like material wrapped around it. So I like it for that reason, it's very natural. And then I have, of course, my Zenport shears, my knife sharpener, which I went in and sharpened the Zenport shears with this. This is the Garden Sharp. It's a beveled edge knife sharpener. You can find all of these materials in my Amazon store and individually linked in the description box below. And then we have Leaf Shine. This is Pocon Leaf Shine by, this is the Crystal brand. And I really love this. I, if you prefer a natural alternative, I'm quite frankly not sure what a good natural alternative would be. This is an aerosol spray. So if you don't like using aerosol, then veer away from this. Um, but basically this is a finishing element. This is the last step that I go in with once everything is potted up. I shine the leaves and I do it very gingerly. It's um, just a very subtle spritz and then wipe off the leaves because most of the leaves are going to come with some hard water damage to them. And you want 
as a finishing look for your plant to be very shiny and perky looking, or at least I do. So this is optional. You can also use a washcloth or a rag, which I also have in my Amazon store linked below, just a very basic washcloth to wipe off the leaves, making sure to avoid the underneath because the underneath have very delicate pores that when we touch it with the oils on our hands, it can clog those pores and prohibit the plant from breathing, so to speak. It's not necessarily breathing, but you know what I mean. If you touch that, it inhibits that pore and damages the plant. So. Now that we know what all the materials are, we're gonna get into potting our orchid. I will do this as a first step. I take my mood moss and I go ahead and soak that. Room temperature water is fine. It doesn't have to be any particular temperature, just whatever you're comfortable with. And I just let those soak for just a moment. Once they've fully submerged and you see no more air bubbles coming out of that moss, that's a pretty good indicator that it's fully saturated. They typically don't need to soak more than 30 seconds and anything over that will just oversaturate them. So once you have that soaked, I give it a nice little squeeze, kind of like a sponge, and then wring out any excess. And the way that I'm holding this is kind of from end to end so that when I do squeeze it, it's compacting the moss together and the water comes out. You're gonna wanna be intentional about the way that you're holding it because that will keep its shape intact. You don't want to destroy or rip apart this moss. You wanna keep it in as big a piece as possible so then you can work backwards with it and you can edit it down as needed. So again, end to end, and I kind of come squishing it all together, wringing out that excess water. And you might wanna do this a couple of times. If some of the bark from the moss falls off, that's totally okay. Um, just remember again to keep your moss intact by going end to end and wringing that water out. And I just have this tray, like plastic tray here, so that I'm not damaging my presentation linen here. You have a big piece, picking that whole piece up and end to end again, squeezing all of that material together. Give it a nice big squeeze, let out that excess moisture and you can rot rotate the moss. These are pretty large pieces. It's okay if it does fall apart, but just set those little pieces aside because those pieces come in handy when there are just little gaps in your moss topper. So again, I'm just rotating the pieces because this was a particularly dense piece. I just keep rotating it, turning it, rotating it, and squishing out that excess moisture until it's fully I think what I have here should be enough moss, but if it isn't, I can always come back and soak a little bit more if necessary. I'm gonna be designing, as always, on my favorite marble Lazy Susan. This just makes designing so much more easy and elegant. Today I chose this spectacular new orchid. I've not seen this variety before and I believe, do I have the tag here? It's called Hark Rainbow. It has this gorgeous scalloped edge on the throat and the overall color is kind of like a peach sunset color. It's really, really spectacular. I see why they would call it a rainbow. It's very special. And the vase that I chose to plant this into is a steel with brass coat or gold. Um, reads a little bit more brass to me, but it's like a brass pedestal vase. And this vase already came with a protective footing to it, so I don't need to add what I would normally add, which would be the 3 8 inch felt pads. If you do have a vase that does not come with those protective pads, or the protective pads that they come with are not sufficient enough to actually protect, go ahead and add the 3 8 inch 
felt pads that I have linked in the description box below and secure those with Loctite gel or whatever super glue you have. But again, all of that material is linked below. I will start by, this is a little bit precarious, so give me one second. I have the box that the orchids came in here. So I'm just going to actually take these out and start one by one. Any dead or just not good looking foliage, you can go ahead and remove that and just set it aside in your trash bin. Normally I might go for a planter that is the exact height of the orchid itself so that it is a very easy application for designing and potting. But other times I find a container that I really like that I think is really complementary to the recipient that it's for. And so this particular color orchid and this planter was a great combination for this recipient. And so what I could tell was by first taking these orchids and kind of situating them into the planter, I could see that there is about an inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches um, height difference between the lip of the vase and the beginning of the moss here. I'm not really paying so much attention to this plastic piece because that is going to get trimmed off, but it'll give you a good idea. So I kind of looked at it here and I'm like, that's enough space that that moss will cover anyways. And the way that I design my planters, I tend to create a little bit of, almost like a mushroom top to the planter. So you'll see that in a bit here, but I'll start with my scissors and trim off that excess plastic, just kind of going horizontally parallel with the planter and trim off the lip of that plastic, being careful. It's hard to see this and make sure that it's also on camera. <laughs> so um, trimming off that plastic lip and again, taking off any damaged leaves. See, there's a tiny leaf down here. It's okay to take these off and just go ahead and toss that another damaged leaf down here. I'll even take some of that excess moss from the top off. And then now you can see it's a lot more natural looking, but even still there's a little bit of space. So I think you can see here, there's a little bit of space. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue trimming this plastic down so that when I go to finish the planter with the moss and when I pin the moss in, it's not going to meet resistance with that plastic piece there. So continue trimming that down, probably another half inch to an inch or so of that plastic. Being careful not to trim the roots because that will shock the plant. You really only want to trim roots when they are dead and damaged. And I will then take some of that excess moss off. If I see any damaged or dead roots, I will actually trim those off because you don't want those in your plant. But just a little dead root there, I'll just trim that off. And then I'll go ahead, make sure if there are any stickers on your vase that you go ahead and take those off as well. And then once I have all oh, this poor guy, I'm sorry, dude. Now I have a spider crawling all over my table. This one looks pretty good as is. We'll see if this is low enough for the vase. And nope, still needs about another inch or so off. I'm gonna go down as far as I can before it feels like I'm starting to interfere with the roots. Now that I have this trimmed down the way that I want it, I'm going to look at the way that the orchid naturally grows as well as the position of the foliage because this is kind of like a puzzle. And you're going to look at the quantity of orchids that you have as well as the shape that you're trying to make with your planter. Perhaps you wanna do something that's a little bit avant-garde and you want all of the blooms to go in the same direction, creating a kind of a cool swoop effect. Maybe you want 
a little bit more of like an umbrella shape, or in my case, because I have three orchids and the way that the orchids are shaped, it's just, I basically am treating this planter as if the recipient is going to put it in one spot and it's gonna be facing forward. So it's a half face arrangement, so to speak. And I want to make sure that actually in this case, so this foliage goes off to the right as well as the blooms. This, the blooms go off to the right, but the foliage is in the center coming forward. So maybe that's a good center thing to begin with. And then this one is a good back right piece. And then I want the other one to be facing to the left. And this particular shape is good for that because the foliage is in the back center. And I'm going to remove this foliage because it's too low. And that will just suffocate in the moss anyways. So don't be afraid to kind of maneuver the foliage a little bit. And I am then going to take this one off that is also too low. This is not going to affect the plant, it's totally okay. I could even take this one off, but I think, I think it needs that. Step back from your planter, make sure that you like the position that your orchids are in and you can just incrementally tweak just a little bit because you'd be amazed at the tiniest tweaks make all of the difference in the design. And to me, that is the difference between average and excellence. So now that I think I have the shape I think that's quite attractive. This is what it looks like forward facing. And you can see it looks quite different from the back. So this is more of a forward facing planter. I could do a full 360 design and just for sake of this tutorial, let's play with that just so you can see. I think that's quite attractive as well. The face of this orchid is more attractive this way. So I'm gonna position it like that and move this one, making sure that the foliage is not overlapping and they all have their, their own space. This feels really good. So I took some time to kind of tweak the shape a couple of times and I feel like I've landed on something that I really like though. I might tweak it just a little bit more because I don't want it to feel flat in any which direction. I want there to be a feeling of dimension from all angles, particularly because it's a triangle. I'm using three stalks here. Step back from that planter, make sure I like the shape. Make sure that the position is good. And I feel like that's, I feel like that's really doing it for me. Though I do wish, I do wish that this orchid had just a little bit more space. So maybe I can rota rotate it to the right a little bit more. But then see it changed the face and I don't like as much how that is facing. So maybe I'll tweak this one a little bit. There we go. Okay, I feel like this is really as great as it's going to get with this. It's 
pretty spectacular from all angles. Each orchid has enough space between each orchid as well as the foliage. Okay, so now that I have the orchids in the position that I want them in, I'm now going to secure them into the container. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. The method that I prefer most is mimicking the way that they would be potted if they were for a hobbyist. I mean, this isn't quite what you would do exactly for a Phalaenopsis as a hobbyist, but it's pretty dang close. Orchids prefer air circulation on their roots. And even though we didn't take these orchids out of their moss potting, we kept them in their original container with the original moss, we still want to mimic that action of allowing some sort of air to flow throughout. Even though we're going to cover the top with moss, we want the interior of the plant not to be too suffocated. So you wouldn't want to use sand or anything that's really fine and heavy in nature because it will suffocate the plant. So what I like to use, and again, what you might use if you were growing orchids as a hobby, is mulch. So I like to use mulch because it's one of the media that you might use if you were planting an orchid as a hobby. And um, it'll allow some of the air to circulate a little bit inside of the planter, which is good because Phalaenopsis like that. So you can use mulch like I have here. I have this brown garden mulch. You can find this at any hardware store, garden section. Um, I get mine at Home Depot. Prefer to go with a darker color so that it matches as closely as possible to the original moss potting, even though you're not necessarily going to see it. That isn't the goal. Still, it's a little bit of like one of those fine detail things that I just prefer. I wouldn't go for a bright red. I go for something that is going to match as closely as possible to the original moss of the plant. And then what I'll do is I have just this small bag here. If there are any large pieces, I might set those aside and cut them down so that I can continue to use them, but just go ahead and use uh, the appropriate size pieces. I don't know if there's a particular like grain size to this, but it's just your kind of basic mulch size. And either with your hands, depending on how dirty you wanna get, or with a shovel that has kind of a little bit of a fine tip to it so you can get in and nice and compact some of those pieces in there that'll be a really nice tool to have. I prefer to use my hands, it's just a little bit easier. And then just start dropping that into those empty spaces in your planter. I also like mulch because it's fairly inexpensive. You know, I think one huge bag is like $3. I think I paid for your standard large size bag. I'm sure they come in different sizes. I'll link that below for you if you need, but if you're just potting one orchid, you might wanna get a small bag and not this huge thing, so it's not sitting around, obviously. And the mulch is kind of cool because you can shape them into, like fit them into place and kind of tuck pieces in where there might be a little bit of a gap. And basically with this, I'm just going right up to the brim. So I'll just fill every gap with the mulch until it's perfectly full and level with the brim of the base. And I'll put in a scoop, then kind of push the pieces down because over time it will settle and then if you don't kind of compact the mulch in, that will affect how your moss sits on top because over time, after the mulch starts to settle, the moss will be affected by the lowering of that settlement. So yeah, just going in and doing that also ensures that you are basically 
stabilizing the organs. Because if you get them in there nice and tight, the less chance you'll have of the orchids falling out. Another material that I used to use a lot instead of mulch is newspaper, which when working with flowers, they typically come wrapped in newspaper. So it's just a material that was pretty much always readily available for me. And much like using the mulch, you would kind of incrementally push your material down bottom up, obviously. And using a knife, I would actually, or a hyacinth stick or a bamboo stick, whatever, but usually a knife, I would kind of poke that newspaper down to continue compacting it until it made a nice tight grip around the orchids. That way the orchids are nice and stabilized and when you go to deliver them and they're in transit, they're not gonna be flopping out because that's the worst. If you deliver your arrangements, then you need all of your mechanics to be nice and sturdy and secure. Okay, great. So I just kind of give the planter a spin. I check to see that the orchids are in there nice and snug. They're not going to pop out, which all of these look great. Take out any excess moss that might be too much for this planter because we want an even base for our mood moss finishing moss to sit upon. So make sure that's kind of leveled out there. Okay, now that I have the orchids all potted up and it's nice and sturdy into the vessel that I'm using today, I'm then going to restake the blooms. Usually orchids will come, um, usually orchids will come potted on their own stakes or they might come on hyacinth sticks, which I don't use as a finishing element. So if you like the green stick, that's totally your design choice. But for me, it's just a, cheap material that they use to stake the orchid for transit. Um, but luckily, these orchids came pre-staked with natural bamboo, which is usually my preferred material. It depends on the client. I will sometimes use acrylic dowels, which is really gorgeous, but you know, just tr in trying to cut down on plastic in every which way I can, I usually tend to omit the acrylic rods. So for some reason, natural colored bamboo or kind of this beige color that's considered natural has been out of stock for a really long time. So when the orchids come pre-staked with these natural bamboo sticks, I love to use them. Uh, otherwise, you normally pay like a dollar per stick for them. And they will come clipped with these plastic butterfly clips. I take those off and um, set that aside, put it in the recycling bin. And then I just stand it up to the position that I want it. These already, I mean, these already were like almost perfectly staked. So there isn't a ton of tweaking that needs to be done here, but what I am going to do is make sure that the stake is perfectly perpendicular with the floor and also perfectly parallel with the stem of the orchid. See, that's kind of standing nice and upright and then these other ones are out at an angle. So what I'm gonna do with the other ones is also make sure that they're sticking straight vertical up at a 90 degree angle. And I'll cut about four or five inches of this wired twine off and then fold it in half. And because it has kind of a bit of a flat side to it, I will make sure that both of those flat sides are lined up together. This just is a nice little clean application here, holding the stem up to the bamboo leave about one inch piece hanging and then just gently wrap around the stem. I give it about two twists so that that looks like four stacked lines of this twine and then 
take the end ties and twist that about two times is good just to make sure it's nice and secure and then again using my Zenport shears I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess I like to leave just a tiny bit of an overhang so it looks like a little tiny bow I mean it's incredible how such a small detail can make all the difference I think that looks really lovely okay now for the second stem so just going ahead and taking off that butterfly clip and I don't know if you can see here but how it's at a slight angle I'm just going to straighten that out so that it stands perfectly straight being as careful as I can not to crush any of the roots if you do, that's okay. It's sometimes impossible not to. And then holding that stem back up, being sure not to catch any of the blooms. Put another piece of that twine, five or six inches or so, hold it in half, and then secure it onto the stake. Again, leaving about an inch overhang on one side stacking that wire and then giving a nice double twist of the ends to secure and snipping it off. Here we go. This one, you can see here, this is also at an angle, so I'm going to move this over here and straighten that up. And then attach the orchid. And then we'll just kind of go through and straighten out where necessary. That one is at a little bit of an angle and it looks the best for the planter. So there we have it. Our orchids are all staked and in place and that is just super gorgeous. I love it so much. This color is driving me nuts. It's so, so, so pretty. So now, and this is definitely order of operations. This is how I do it every single time because if you were to do the stakes after you applied the moss, that might mess up the moss. So order of operations is put the orchid plants in the vase, then the mulch, then the stakes, then the moss, then the leaf shine. So now let's move on to moss. This is all nice and rehydrated and malleable. So we can create pretty much any shape that we like. Sometimes the moss comes with these little pieces of grass sticking out on that. And I, I don't necessarily like how that looks. So I will just go ahead and trim that off and also sometimes there are pieces of moss that have a little bit more of a dense or compact look to the greenery so sometimes i even like a hedge trim will go in and trim that up a little bit because i really like how compact it looks sometimes the moss sticks out a little bit more and then sometimes it looks a little bit more compact. I think the compact looks really stunning. So I just trim it up a little bit. You don't want to trim too low though, because then you'll start to expose kind of like the spores. I don't know if that's the correct word for it, but uh, you'll start to expose the under brown part. So just at your discretion, kind of lightly trim if you like that look or not, just go ahead and use it as is. So to pin the moss, we're going to use and this is always what I use. 22 gauge wire. This is also linked in the description box below. I specifically use 22 gauge because it just to me feels like the right amount of strength. It's not too thick so that it becomes visible and it's not too thin so that it's warping as you try to push it down. It's kind of like the perfect amount of strength as well as width 
so that it remains, your mechanics remain invisible, but it still creates a nice sturdy base for your moss. So because this is a little bit of a different vase, normally I might pot orchids so that the lip of the vase meets exactly the top of the container that the orchid comes in. But in this case, these are sticking out a little bit. So we're gonna create a little bit of a mold with our moss here. And I'll start at the top and then work the moss down to the lip. And anywhere there's a little kind of breakage where the, mar the moss appears to be splitting apart, I'll just kind of mold my hands a little bit more together to smush that moss in and then secure with the pin. I want this moss to kind of sit so that you can see just barely that lip, just a little bit. So I'll start with the biggest pieces as well as the biggest openings. So what I do with the 22 gauge wire, usually cutting it in thirds is the perfect hairpin size for pinning moss and so I've already done that. I have pre-cut pieces and I already pre, this is called a hairpin and basically you take that one third size and bend it in half. And I am aiming the pin into the moss of the original orchid plant because that way the pin has something to grab onto. It doesn't always hang on to the moss, the uh, mulch as well, because the mulch is very hard and thick. And the wire needs something to pierce. Sometimes the moss also comes with little sticks and debris, so I will just go ahead and trim those little things out too just gives the overall planter a nice, clean look. And then just putting that one into the mid-center. I might take off that leaf, this lower leaf. I think this is gonna be more in the way, but we'll see, I'll leave it on for now. I feel like maybe this is the first video where I've talked about this, but I treat all of my tools for their individual uses and purposes. So these shears, which they are in my Amazon store linked below, these are Klaus stainless steel shears, and I use these specifically for just cutting random flower things that are not the ends of stems. Um, for things like this, where I'm trimming moss and um, cutting just random things that are not flowers, basically. Um, and then the Zenport shears, I sometimes use for wire work as well as stems, but each tool has its individual use. Um, I wouldn't necessarily use the Zenport shears for this, nor does it really work. So you will need a pair of shears dedicated specifically to doing this type of green cutting. I also like to use these for cutting tea leaves and all sorts of other green foliage that I'm making interesting shapes with. Once it hits the lip, I kind of like fold it in a little bit. This is working out really beautifully. And the pieces that I don't have already folded over, I'm just going to do that as I go. I think I might need to soak some more moss, so I will be right back to do that after this. If you see the roots, out, that's totally fine. Don't cut those. If the person does want to keep the orchid post bloom, these aerial, what they're called aerial roots, will want to stay intact because it's just a second option for the plant if some of the other interior roots have died. So don't cut those off um, unless you think aesthetically it's not part of what you're going for, then go ahead and trim them off. But 
the plant itself post bloom would benefit from keeping those aerial roots. So I'll just work around that a little bit. I'm molding the moss around that root so it's sticking out, it's visible. I also think it gives it a much more natural look. It's looking good. And I'll save these little pieces for below. Or I'm going to soak more moss, I will be right back. And kind of some weird holes over here, so I'm just going to kind of sculpt that into place. And then also pin that down. It does help if you have all of your wire pre-pinned hair pin in hair pin shape, I should say, because, you know, it just makes it a lot easier. And make a couple of hair pin wires, just folding that wire in half, folding at the top, bending, and just pinning that into place. And I'm being careful to shape this into, this is pretty malleable material, so, you can really kind of like sculpt this into the shape that you want and then pin it down. And because I like a little bit more of a mushroom top shape, I can really achieve that with this type of moss versus the sheet moss, which you can create a little bit of a sculpting effect with it, but this creates more of a rounded sculpting and you can create more sculpture, if that makes sense. The sheet moss, you don't get as much depth or dimension because it's, as the name indicates, a sheet. So now I'm just filling in little holes with the smaller pieces that I had soaked up front. And again, sculpting every little piece, it's pretty great. You can take one piece and sculpt it into the exact shape that you want and then pin at the seams and where the points where you need it to stay down and where you want to anchor. You want some of that to go down a little bit in the top center because it's looking a little bit high there so you can use the pins to do that. You can just push that down a little bit that'll help to decrease some of the height up there. And what I'll do is usually when I buy a box of mood moss, I'll, you can see that in the box there will be some pieces that are already small and broken. So when I'm doing these orchid planters, I'll sift out and select larger pieces as well as sm smaller pieces so that I'm not tearing apart and ruining the large pieces just to make smaller pieces. Take out the smaller pieces so you can use for finishing up holes and stuff like this and then larger pieces for your overall shape and design. And then that way you are maximizing the amount of product that you get because you wouldn't want to spend all of that money on those large pieces just to break them down unless you specifically needed that for that purpose. You want to keep as much of your product intact and maximize your usage. This is looking glamorous and gorgeous. I'm obsessed. I wish this worked for me, <laughs> but it's not. I do like to keep orchids in my house because I am admittedly a low maintenance plant person. I, we live in Los Angeles here and it's very dry most of the time. Though in the last couple of years, it has been a little bit more humid, uncharacteristically humid, humid for the, I would say 18 years that I've lived here. It's been the most humid I've ever experienced it. Um, but yeah, for Los Angeles, and in the zone that I'm in, in downtown, I feel like the plants that thrive the most are the ones that are pretty low maintenance. And actually, family houses orchids, once you know exactly what they want, are extremely easy plants to take care of. 
So this is it. I will probably, once I'm off camera, because it's pretty difficult to do on camera um, as I'm moving in and out of the frame, but like I'll just do little finishing touches, like trim off some of that is looking a little wispy and wild, and I want it to look kind of formal and finished, like the other pieces of moss here that are more compact. So I'll just do little finishing touches like this off camera before I go to send this out to its recipient. And now for the finishing touch. I highly recommend getting a small can like this. This is a three ounce can and I've had this for years. I do quite a bit of orchid planters too and this has lasted, I think I've had this can for probably six or seven years. Um, I'm not using it every day, all day. So three ounce can, in my opinion, is really good to start if you're just using it for home orchid decoration. Um, but yeah, I'll just go ahead and spritz very lightly, making sure not to get the underside of the foliage. I'm trying to be conscientious of that. I'm not intentionally spraying on the underside. Again, we don't want to clog the pores of those leaves. And voila, here we have it. Oh my God, that is just so stunning. I think this recipient is going to absolutely love this orchid planter and it looks like this orchid should last quite a while. This is a pretty hardy looking orchid. I don't know if I've never used this particular variety, but it looks really juicy and very happy. When you're looking for orchids, you wanna look for blooms that are already open. Because a lot of the times, if you buy blooms that are closed, they may not open or they'll open a lot smaller than you anticipate them to. So look for blooms that are already open that have just a couple of buds up here if these open that's really great and lucky but you want to emphasize the you want to keep your emphasis on the main blooms here this is what you're going for and if these look good and juicy and awesome then they're going to look good things to look out for when you're buying orchids just like when you're buying fresh cut roses Sometimes you can tell if the product is a little bit old or dehydrated by the veins of the flesh of the petals. So looking close here, these are extremely juicy. There's no depletion in the moisture of the petal and everything just looks really lush and sparkly. It's when it starts to feel like a little bit more papery and you can feel and see the veins of the flesh of the petal that you can tell that it's a little bit older and it's not going to last that long. An orchid uh, lifespan, bloom lifespan, is typically about a month. When I'm doing my orchid planters for retail and hospitality and even clients' homes, I typically say about a month. If they get more or longer time out of it, then that is a bonus. Some varieties of orchids do last a little bit longer. Some have waxier blooms, and therefore moisture depletion uh, is basically less from those blooms. And because they're thicker and hardier, they retain more moisture and they live longer. So yeah, Phalaenopsis orchid blooms typically last about a month and then I go in and replace with new fresh orchids every single month. There are all sorts of things that you can do, all sorts of weird elements that you can add into your planters, but I think that this is, the more minimal, the better in my opinion. I want the emphasis on the flower and on the orchid, and I want the, the um, decorative element to mimic as much as possible some of what its natural environment might already look like. Phalaenopsis orchids are a epiphytic plant, meaning they grow on other plants 
They are not parasitic though. So in most cases when plants grow on other plants, they're parasites and they take energy from that host plant. That is not the case with Phalaenopsis orchids. Phalaenopsis orchids simply use the other plant, usually a tree, as its structure to grow on and then its roots and its, its leaves cascade downward. This style of design is actually completely 180 of how it naturally grows. You would see the, and I'll put a picture up here for you that you can see, uh, basically they grow with their foliage cascading downward as well as the blooms, the blooms cascade downward. So the way that we plant them upright like this is counter logical, counter intuitive to how they naturally grow, but um, stunning nonetheless. I'm glad that we get to use these in our homes to decorate and fill our lives with beauty. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other tutorials that you would like to see, any questions that you have. I, I take note from you and what your requests are so that I can make those videos for you. Also, if you would like to support this channel, I have a link to my Venmo as well as a Zelle link there. I've yet to hit a thousand subscribers, so basically over the past year, I have created all of this content completely for free. I do not get paid to do this and I invest about 30 to 40 hours a week creating videos. If I'm publishing one a week, it usually takes me about 40 hours. So if you value this content and you would like to see more, please consider contributing to the funding of this channel. And I'm very grateful that you're here. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and what you'd like to see next. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.